and gentlemen, welcome to our humble show. As written in the description of this video, you will now be seeing the play Twelfth Night. Do you know the story? You don't? Oh, that's a tragedy. You've given me more work to do. I will explain the characters. Listen close. First, Viola, a young woman of aristocratic birth washed upon the shore of Illyria when her ship was wrecked in a storm. She believes her twin brother, whose face and voice so alike, died in the storm and decides to make her own way in the world. She disguises as a young boy, calling herself Cesario, and becomes a page to this Duke Orsino of Illyria. Orsino becomes fond of this boy, and soon trusts him from the bottom of his heart. Poor Viola finds out that she loves this Orsino, but cannot confess her feelings for her circumstance. Even worse, Orsino is lovesick to this beautiful Countess Olivia, who has no interest in him. To persuade the lady, Orsino sends Viola as a messenger of his love, and here we shall start our play. Oh, we cannot forget these people. Malvolio, the straight-laced steward of Olivia, very efficient, but also very self-righteous. A boring kind of man, I'd say. His priggishness and haughty attitude earned him these enemies, Sir Toby and Mariah. Sir Toby is Olivia's uncle, but quite the opposite of a noble gentleman. He has a rowdy behavior, loves stupid jokes, drinks awfully. He is hated by Malvolio as much as he hates him, but this man is lucky to have this young lady, Mariah, on his side. Mariah is Olivia's clever, daring, young, waiting gentlewoman. She is also fed up with Malvolio's attitude, and seems to have a plan. These are our characters for this play. Understood? Ah, me. Apologies for not introducing myself. I am Feste, a clown at Olivia's household, but I often pop into the Duke Orsino's house too. I make my living by making pointed jokes, singing old songs, being generally witty, and sometimes offering good advice cloaked under a layer of foolishness. Madam, there is at the gates a young gentleman much desires to speak with you. Uh, from the Count Orsino, is it? Hey, madam, tis a fair young man and well attended. Tell him he shall not speak with me has been told so, and he says he'll stand at the door like a sheriff's post and be the supporter to a bench, but he'll speak with you. Of what personage and years is he? Not yet old enough for a man, nor young enough for a boy, as his was is before tis a peace god, and a cuddling when tis almost an apple. Tis with him in standing water between boy and man, he is very well favored, and he speaks very seriously. One would think his mother's milk were scarce out of him. Who of my people hold him in delay? Sir Toby, madam, your kinsman. Fetch him off, I pray you. He speaks nothing but madman. Fie on him. Let this way young man approach, Malvolio. Mariah, give me my veil. Come, throw it on my face. We'll once more hear Orsino's embassy. The Honorable Lady of the House. Which is she? Speak to me, I shall answer for her. Your will? <clears throat> Most radiant, exquisite, and a much of a beauty. I pray you, tell me if this be the lady of the house, for I never saw her. 
I'd be loath to cast away my speech, for besides that it is excellently well penned, I have taken great pains to con it. Come to what's important in it. I forgive you the praise. Alas, I'd great pains to study it, and this poet go. It is the more like to be feigned. I pray you, keep it in. I heard you were saucy at my gates and allowed your approach rather to wander at you than to hear you. If you be not mad, be gone. If you have reason, be brief. Tis not that time of moon with me to make one in so skipping a dialogue. Tell me your mind. It alone concerns your ear. I bring no overture of war, no taxation of homage. I hold the olive in my hand. My words are as full of peace as matter. Give us this place alone. We will hear this divinity. Now, sir, what is your text? <clears throat> Most sweet lady. A comfortable doctrine and much may be said of it. Where lies your text? In Narsina's bosom. In his bosom? In what chapter of his bosom? To answer by the method in the first of his heart. Oh, I have read it. It is heresy. Have you no more to say? I see what you are. You are too proud. But if you were the devil, you are fair. If I did love you in my master's flame, with such a suffering, such a deadly life, in your denial, I would find no sense. I would not understand it. Why? What would you? Make me a willow cabin at your gate, and call upon my soul within the house. Write loyal cantons of contempt love, and sing them loud even in the dead of night. Cry out, Olivia! <laughs> oh, you should not rest between the elements of air and earth, but you should pity me. You might do much. What is your parentage? About my fortunes, yet my state is well. I am a gentleman. Get you to your lord. I cannot love him. Let him send no more, unless, perchance you, come to me again, to tell me how he takes it. Pay you well. I thank you for your pains. Spend this for me. I am no feed post lady. My master, not myself, lacks recompense. Love make his heart of flint that you shall love, and let your father, like my masters be, placed in contempt. Farewell, fair cruelty. What is your parentage? Above my fortunes, yet my state is well. I am a gentleman. Oh, I'll be sorry thou art, thy tongue, thy face, thy limbs, actions, and spirit, to give thee fivefold blazon. Oh, not to fast, soft, soft, unless the master were the man. How now? Even so quickly may one catch the plague. Methinks I will this use perfections with an invisible and subtle to creep in in mine eyes. Well, let it be. I do I know not what and fear to find, mine eye too great a flatterer of my mind. Faith, show thy force. Ourselves we do not owe. What his decree must be, and be this so. Oh wow, I see a triangle now. But human relations never just fit in one shape. Tangles and twisters, that's what they make. Viola, Orsino, Olivia. 
Remember these three. What's up with the others? Let's watch carefully. Here comes Sir Toby, drinking all day. Keep on listening. He has something to say. Moran, I say, a sloop of wine. Ah, come on, fool. There is sixpence for you. Let's have a song. Let our catch be thou knave. Begin, fool. It begins, hold thy peace. I shall never begin if I hold my peace. <laughs> Good faith. Come, begin. What a caterwauling do you keep here? If my lady have not called up her steward Malvolio and bid him turn you out of doors, never trust me. My lady's the Catayan. We are politicians. Malvolio's the Pega Ramsey, and... To merry men be we. Am not I consanguineous? Am I not of her blood? Tilly Valley Lady. There dwelt a man in Babylon. Lady, lady. For the love of God, peace. My masters, are you mad? What are you? Have you no wits, manners, no honesty, but to gamble like tinkers at this time of night? Do you make an ale house of my lady's house that just squeak out the cozier's catches with the animation or a more of voice? Is there no respect of place, persons, nor time in you? We did keep time, sir, in our catches. It's not cup. Sir Toby, I must be round with you. My lady made me tell you that, though she harbors you as her kinsman, she is nothing allied to your disorders. If you can separate yourself and the misdemeanors, you are welcome to the house. If not, and it will please you to take leave of her, she is very willing to bid you farewell. Farewell, dear heart, since I must need me gone. Thank you, Sir Toby. Shall I bet him go? What and if you do? Shall I bet him go and spare not? Oh, no, 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 no. You dare not. Ah, uh, out of tune, sir, you lie. Uh, any more than a steward? Dost thou think, because thou art virtuous, there shall be no more cakes and ale? Go, sir, rub your chain with crumbs. A stoop of wine, Mariah. You. Mistress Mary, if you prize my lady's favor at anything more than contempt, you will not give means for this uncivil rule. She shall know of it by this hand. <sighs> Go shake your ears. For as good a deed as to drink when a man's hungry, to challenge him the field and then to break promise with him and make a fool of him. Sweet Sir Toby, be patient for tonight. Since the youth of the count was to die with thy lady, she is much out of quiet. For Monsieur Malvolio, let me alone with him. I know I can do it. What wilt thou do? I will drop in his way some obscure epistles of love, wherein by the shape of his leg, the manner of his gait, the expression of his eye, forehead, and complexion, he shall find himself most feelingly personated. <laughs> I can write very like my lady and niece. On a forgotten matter, we can hardly make distinction off our hands. He shall think, by the letters that thou wilt drop, that they come from my niece, and that she's in love with him. <laughs> my purpose is indeed a horse of that color. Oh, twill be admirable. This Miss Mary is quite contrary. You must be careful, she is a bit scary. Never make a lady your enemy, you know. Now let's see what's up with Orsino. Oh, give me some music. 
Come hither, boy. If ever thou shalt love, in the sweet pangs of it, remember me. For such as I am, all true lovers are, unstayed and skittish in all motions else, save in the constant image of the creature that is beloved. How dost thou like this tune? It gives a very echo to the seat where love is thrown. Thou dost speak masterly. Young though thou art, thine eye hath stayed upon some favour that it loves. Hath it not, boy? A little, by your favour. What kind of woman is it? Of your complexion. She's not worth thee, then. <laughs> what years of faith? About your ears, my lord. To all by heaven. Let still a woman take an elder than herself. So where is she to him? So sway she level in her husband's heart. For boy, however we do praise ourselves, our fancies are more giddy and unfirm, more longing, wavering, sooner lost and worn than women's are. I think it well, my lord. Thank you for thy music, fool. Once more, Cesario, get thee to yon same sovereign cruelty. But if she cannot love you, sir? I cannot be so answered. Sooth. But you must... Say that some lady, as perhaps there is, hath for your love a greater punk of heart as you have for Olivia. You cannot love her. You tell her so. Must she not then be answered? There is no woman's side can bide so strong a passion that love doth give my heart. No woman's heart so big to hold so much. They lack retention. Alas, their love may be called appetite, but mine is as hungry as the sea and can digest as much. Make no compare between that love a woman can bear me and that I owe Olivia. I, but I know. What dost thou know? Too well, what women to men may owe. In faith, they are as true of heart as we. My father had a dollar loved a man, as it might be. Perhaps were I a woman, I should your lordship. And what's her history? A blank, my lord. She never taught her love. But let's concealment, like a worm in the bud. Feel on her the mask tick. She pined in thought, and with a green and yellow melancholy, she sat like patience on the monument, smiling at grief. Was not this love indeed? We men may say more, swear more, but indeed our shores are more than will. For still we prove much in our vows, but little in our love. But died thy sister of her love, my boy? I am all the daughters of my father's house, and all the brothers, too. And yet, I know not. Sir, shall I to this lady? 
Aye, that's the thing. To her in haste. Give her this jewel. Say, my love can give no place. By no Danae. This dear young lady, she can't speak up, for the way she chose is now a hiccup. Oh, here comes Mariah. Better be careful. From now on, this story will be suspenseful. Get both your two into the box, Tree. Malvolio's coming down his walk. He has been yonder in the sun, practicing behavior to his own shadow this half hour. <laughs> Observe him for the love of mockery. For now, this letter will make a contemplative idiot of him. Close in the name of jesting. Lie there, there. For here comes the child that must be caught with a tickling. Tis but fortune, all is fortune. Mariah was told me she did affect me, and I've heard herself come thus near, that she, she fancy she'd be one of my complexion. Besides, she uses me with the more exotic respect than anyone else that follows her. What should I think on it? To be Count Malvolio, having been three months married to her, sitting in my state, calling my officers about me in my drenched velvet gown, having come from a day bad where I have left Olivia's living, <clears throat> and then to have the humor of state, and after a demure travel of regard, telling them I know my place as I would they should do theirs. Do you ask for my kinsman, Toby? I extend my hand to him thus, quenching my familiar smile with an austere regard of control, saying, Cousin Toby, my fortunes have been cast me on your knees. Give me this prerogative of speech. You must demand your drunkenness. <laughs> Oh, scab! Oh, what employment have we here? By my life, this is my lady's hand. These be her very seas, her use, and her teas, and thus makes she a great peas. <laughs> it is in contempt of question, her hand. To the unknown beloved, this and my good wishes. Her very phrases, by your leave, wax soft, and the impression her lucrees with which she uses to seal. Is my lady to whom should this be? <laughs> if this fall into thy hand, revolve, thy fates open their hands. Let thy tongue tang arguments of state. Put thyself into the trick of singularity. She thus advises thee that sighs for thee. Remember who commanded thy yellow stockings and wish to see thee ever cross guarded. I say, remember, go to thou art mate. If thou desirest to be so, farewell, she that will order services with thee. The fortunate unhappy. <laughs> I do not now fool myself to let imagination chain me for every reason excite to this that my lady loves me. She did command my yellow stockings of late. She did praise my legs being cross guarded. And in this, she manifests herself to my love with a kind of injunction drives me through these habits of her liking. <laughs> I thank my stars, I am happy. 
apple bestringed, stout, in yellow stockings and cross garters, even with the swiftness of putting on, shall with my stars be praised. <laughs> you are said to postscript. Thou canst not choose but know who I am. If thou entertainest my love, let it appear in thy smiling, thy smiles become thee well. Therefore, in my presence, still smile, dear my sweet, I with thee. Jehovah, I thank thee. I will smile, I will do everything that thou wilt have me. <laughs> Why, there has been even such a dream that when the image of it leaves him, he must run mad. <laughs> if you will then see the fruits of the sport, like his first approach before my lady, he will come to her in yellow stockings, and tis the colour she abhors, in cross gartered, a fashion she detests, and he will smile upon her which will now be so unsuitable to her disposition, being addicted to a melancholy as she is, that it cannot but turn him into a notable contempt. If you will see it, follow me. To the gates of Tartar, the most excellent devil of wit. Dear old Malvolio, he's now in big trouble. He'll be daydreaming in his pink bubble. Here comes Viola, poor messenger of her love. But Olivia's voice is still higher than Octave. What is your name? Cesario is your servant's name, fair princess. My servant, sir. Twas never a merry world since Lily Fanning was called compliment. Your servant to the Count Orsino, youth. And he's yours, and he must needs be yours. Your servant's servant is your servant, madam. For him, I think not on him. For his thoughts, for they were blanks rather than filled with me. Madam, I come to wet your gentle thoughts on his behalf. Oh, by your leave, I pray you, I bid you never speak again of him. But would you undertake another suit? I had rather hear you to solicit that than music from the spheres. I can hear no more, my lady. Stay, I pray thee. Tell me, what thou thinkst of me? That you do think you are not what you are. If I think so. I think the same of you. Would it be better, madam, than I am? I wish it might, for now I am your fool. Oh, what a deal of scorn looks beautiful in the contempt and anger of his lip. Cesario, I love thee so, that maugre all thy pride, nor wit, nor reason can my passion hide. Do not extort thy reasons from this clause, for that I will. Thou therefore has no cause, but rather reason does with reason fetter. Love sought is good, but given unsought better. By innocence I swear, and by my youth, I have one heart, one bosom, and one truth, and that no woman has, no never known, shall mistress be of it, save I alone. And so, Adieu, good madam. Never more will I my master's tears to you deplore. Yet come again, for thou perhaps mayst move that heart which now abhors to like his love. Where's Malvolio? He is sad and civil and suits well for a servant with my fortunes. Where is Malvolio? He's coming, madam, but in a very strange manner. He is sure possessed. He does nothing but smile, 
Your ladyship had best have some god about you if you come, for sure the man's tainted in sweat. Go call him hither. I am as mad as he, if said, a merry madness it will be. Sweet lady. <laughs> Smilest thou, I sent for thee upon a sad occasion. Not black in my mind, though yellow in my legs. It did come to his hands, and commands shall be executed. I think we do know the sweet Roman hand. Hmm? Will thou go to bed, Marvolio? Remember who commanded thy yellow stockings. Thy yellow stockings? And wish to see thee ever cross garted. Cross garted? Go to thou art made, if thou desirest to be so. Why, this is very midsummer madness. Good Maria. Let this fellow be looked to. Where's my cousin Toby? Let some of my people have a special care of him. I would not have him miscarry for the half of my dowry. I, my lady. <laughs> Go hang yourselves all, you idle shallow things. I'm not of your elements. You shall no more hereafter. Oh, oh Lord. <laughs> really, hold thy peace. Come, we'll have them in a dark room and bound. No, no, no. My niece is already in the belief that he's mad. But see, but see. <laughs> Mariah and Toby are now into the game. I wonder if it puts Malvolio to shame. Here comes a man, quite in delay. We are now heading to the end of our play. Save thee, friends, and thy music. Dost thou live by thy teva? No, sir. I live by the church. Art thou a churchman? No such matter, sir. I do live by the church, for I do live at my house, and my house doth stand by the church. <laughs> I understand you, sir. Tis well begged. What do you live by, sir? I have lost all I lived by. My stars shine darkly over me. My name is Sebastian. My father was that Sebastian no misery. He left behind him myself and the sister, both born in an hour. If the heaven had been pleased, would we had so ended. But the breach of the sea was where my sister drowned. Alas, the day. A lady, sir, though it was said she much resembled me, with the slight difference of this mole on my brow. Dear sir, if you want a shining star over you, head east of this road. Your fate of happiness will be waiting for you. I know not what I mean, but I have nothing to lose. I shall choose east, as you say, for my next road. The gentleness of all the gods go with thee. This fellow is wise enough to play the fool, and to do that well craves a kind of lit. He must observe their mood on whom he jests, the quality of persons, and the time. This is a practice, as full of labor as a wise man's art, for folly that he wisely chose is fit. But wise men, fully fallen, quite taint their wit. Cesario, thou changed your heart and came once more. 
thou shalt not choose but go. Do not deny, thou started one poor heart of mine in thee. What relish is in this? How runs a stream? Or I am mad? Or else this is a dream? Let fancy steam and sense in neath steep. If it be thus the dream, still let me sleep. Claim not this haste of mine, if you mean well. Now, go with me into the chantry by. What do you say? I'll go with you. And having sworn truth, ever will be true. This is the air. That is a glorious sun. Just as the world said, I find a shining star. Now things are messy. Are you confused? But please do not worry, you'll soon be amused. At last, our stage is all very set. Please keep on watching what happens next. Here comes the Countess. Now heaven walks on earth. What would my lord, but that he may not have, wherein Olivia makes him so visible? Cesario, you do not keep promise with me. Madam. Gracious Olivia. What do you say, Cesario? Good, my lord. My lord will speak. My lady hushes me. What? To perverseness? You uncivil lady, to whose ingrate and unauspicious altars? My soul, the faithful offerings, have breathed out that ever devotion tendered. What shall I do? Come, boy, with me. My thoughts are ripe in mischief. I'll sacrifice the lamb that I do love, despite a raven's heart within a dove. Where goes Cesario? After him, my love. More than I love these eyes, more than my life. More, by all mores, than e'er I shall love wife. If I do fain, you witnesses above, punish my life for tainting on my love. Whither, my lord? Cesario, husband, stay. Husband? I, husband, can he that deny? Her husband, Sarah. No, my lord, not I. I may detest it. How am I beguiled? Who does beguile you? Who does do you wrong? Hast thou forget thyself? Is it so long? Call forth the fool, the witness of our marriage. Fool, what do you have to say? Uh, indeed, I attended my lady's wedding. But I realize the groom slightly differed from this boy. My lady's groom had a small mole upon his brow. One face, one voice, one habit, two persons. Do you think this is possible, young man? I had a brother, name of Sebastian, whom the blind waves and surges have devoured. He had a mole on his brow. My lord, if nothing lets to make us happy both, but this my masculine usurped attire, do not embrace me till each circumstance of place, time, fortune do cohere and jump, that I am Viola, which to confirm, I bring you to a captain in this town, where I my maiden wit, by whose gentle help I was preserved to serve this noble count. And, and all the occurrence of my fortune since that been between this lady and this lord. So comes it, lady. You have been mistook. But nature to her bias drew in that. Be not amazed. Right noble is his blood. Boy, thou hast said to me a thousand times, Thou never should love woman like to me. 
and all those things we lay over swear and those swearings keep us true in soul as doth that of bed's continent the fire that severs day from night your master quits you and for your service done him so much against the metal of your sex, so far beneath your soft and tender breeding. And since you've called me master for so long, here's my hand. You shall from this time be your master's mistress. A sister, you are she. My lady loves me. To be Count Malvolio, your lady loves you. No, my lady. How now, Malvolio? Madam, you have done me wrong, notorious wrong. Have I, Malvolio? No. Lady, you have. Pray you, produce that letter. You must not now deny it is your hand. Alas, Malvolio, this is not my writing though I confess much like the character, but out of question, tis Mariah's hand. This practice hath most shrewdly passed upon thee. Good madam, hear me speak, and let no quarrel nor no brawl to come taint the condition of this present hour, which I have wondered at. In hope it shall not, most freely, I confess, myself and Sir Toby set this device against Malvolio here upon some stubborn and uncourteous parts we had conceived against him. How with a sportful malice it was followed, may rather pluck on laughter than revenge. If that the injuries be justly weighed that have on both sides passed. Alas, poor fool. How have they baffled thee? I will be revenged on the whole pack of you! Pursue him and entreat him to a peace. Cesario, come. For so you shall be whilst you are a man, but in other habits you are seen. Orsino's mistress and his fancy's queen. So, all the tangles come loose at last. We are ready to celebrate the three marriages. Viola and Orsino, Olivia and Sebastian. The other, it's not Malvolio, I'm afraid, but actually those who tricked the poor man. Clever Mariah made Sir Toby to marry her as a reward of her cunning. You never know what happens in life, do you? The feast is over. Just like the twelfth night of Christmas, our play comes to an end. Now, let me finish this play with a little song. When that I was and a little tiny boy with hey-ho, the wind and the rain, a foolish thing was but a toy for the rain.
watching.